Good morning, everyone joining um, this live session. Um, I'm just going to wait a few moments for people to all join and then we'll get cracking with this live session shortly. So let's just take another 30 seconds or so um, before we get cracking as, as a lot of people are joining at the moment one by one. Good morning to those that have just joined, just saying before that we'll start the live session in a few moments time, probably at one minute past, just to allow for those people that are coming in slightly, ever so slightly late. Super. So we're up to a good amount of participants now. So I'm going to get started with today's live session. And so today we're going to be talking about how to build your well-being strategy and a well-being strategy that is backed up by the data. I'm Harry Bliss, CEO and co-founder of Champion Health. And our vision is to make well-being accessible, inclusive and engaging. At the moment, well-being can sometimes be quite clunky. Sometimes we don't know where to start. Sometimes you might look at 15 different areas of well-being and need to work with 15 different providers. That's where we're simplifying well-being. And we've built the Netflix of well-being that I'll share with you later on in this presentation. But the main area that we want to get across is how you can build your well-being strategy that is evidence-based and robust. Now, I delivered a training session that was over two days on this topic recently, and I've now got the challenge to try and reduce that down into a 25-minute session. So hopefully I'm able to condense everything that we've learned as an expert-led team from working with global banks all the way through to the NHS and other global organizations in building robust well-being strategies that drive engagement and have impact at the core of it. So an initial welcome to you, first of all. Um, thank you for joining this live session. Please use the chat to ask any questions. and I'm going to try my best to get through to them at the end. As I said, we've got around 25 to 30 minutes. There's a lot to squeeze in within here. And I'm going to share the secret sauce for workplace well-being. There are a lot of things that you may not have come across within this live session. And what I'd ask for is, although there'll be a lot of information to take in, get your pen and paper out. And if you can take away one thing, within this live session, then I've done my job today. We're also offering exclusive to Cardinate Connect Summit members a free health and wellbeing strategy review, again, with our expert led team, whether that's Jack Green, our head of performance that used to be the head of wellbeing at BBC, all the way through to our other academics, we can support you in reviewing that strategy to make sure you're on the right path going forwards. But to begin with, before we go on to the strategy itself, I just want to share my personal story as to the why behind well-being for me. So I founded Champion at the ripe age of 24, squeakier voice than I have now, still can't grow a beard, but I definitely couldn't back then. And again, the vision was to make well-being inclusive, accessible and engaging. And we had a team of over 60 academics, well-being experts, GPs, in all areas of health and well-being, from mental health through to women's health, men's health, financial well-being, musculoskeletal health, we had a really strong team. But the area that I struggled with was the operational side of things. So this is my friend James. Now, James was a director in a global organization, and I approached him. I coached his kids at cricket, and I approached him to say, look, James, I really need support in being able to scale the business from an operational side. And he said, look, Harry, I'm more than happy to give you support. And you know those people that are extremely time poor, but they will find the time to invest into you. And you don't know where they get the time from. James was that person for me. And for six months into Champion's journey, James laid the foundations within Champion Health and really supported us to scale to be at the stage we're at now four years later. Now, James had a wife and two kids. James raised over three quarters of a million pounds for charity. James had set up a local community cricket club. Now, six months into Champion's journey, my friend and mentor James ended up tragically taking his own life due to a short bout of workplace stress. And that's the fire in my belly. The company changed from something that I wanted to work to something that I needed to work. This was someone that was highly successful, someone that his career went from strength to strength, someone that was managing a team of thousands of people within his organization. And for him to end up taking his own life, it lit that 
fire in my belly to make that positive change that we need to do within our organizations. And the key thing for me in the learning from it is we never know what someone is struggling with, especially behind a Zoom screen now. So that's my why behind well-being. I'm really curious for you to think internally in terms of what's your why behind well-being? Is it to boost performance across the organization? Is it because it's the right thing to focus on um, because we're all human beings? So today we will be revealing our secret source for um, building a, an effective workplace health strategy. And as I said before, this has been built from a team of health professionals, GPs, academics, and it's been based upon over hundreds of organizations that we've worked with and thousands of research papers, quite simply, so you don't have to go through them in your own time and decipher what's effective and what's not. So what you'll learn in this session is how to get your employees on board how to drive engagement amongst your workforce, which topics of well-being to focus on, because there are so many, and then how to make well-being more measurable. And that is really then the wraparound for how to build your health and well-being strategy. I'm also going to introduce the Netflix of well-being to you at the end of the session. This is a platform that Champion Health have built that is looking to go across the globe to be able to assist organizations like yours with building robust well-being strategies and covering all areas of well-being in one platform. So the first element that I'll touch upon is why your well-being strategy is crucial. And I would argue that it's just as important as your marketing, business and sales strategy. But at the moment, sometimes it can't be viewed in the same light. But there are three main areas that I'll break down within here as to why it's so important. The first area is the business case. We are burning cash quite simply at the moment within our organizations if we're not prioritizing employee well-being. Employees that are happy, healthy, uh, they are productive, they perform better, whether that's our sales team and they're able to get those deals over the line, whether it's our marketing team, we can enhance creativity throughout. There's a really strong business case and the latest data from Deloitte is showing that on average it's £1,600 per year per employee that poor mental health is costing organizations. Now in an organization of 1,000 people, that's over one and a half million pounds per annum within there. So that's the first area and there are huge returns on investment from investing in wellbeing and I'll share those with you shortly. The second area is the reputational risk of not focusing on wellbeing. We've seen it with many organizations that I won't name within here, but really employees are starting to have that voice and we want to be an employer of choice. And if we're not looking after our employees, they will firstly vote with their feet. And secondly, it may damage the reputation of your organization. And the third element is then the legal case within that we need to comply with the legislation, whether in the United States, all the way through to the UK, we need to take care of our employees, mental health and physical health to make sure we're in a strong position from the legislative angle. And the final element, which is the most obvious that I hope everyone on this call will share, is then the moral case within. We need to look after our employees. It's not just the right thing to do for the business, it's the right thing to do to build sustainable, healthy organizations that are going to have that long-term impact. So over the last year and 15 months or so, we have faced unique challenges and we've been highly reactive and putting out fires where fires weren't before. And whether we're working as HR, health and safety, all the way through to if you're a CEO or the boots on the ground and an employee, we've all been supporting ourselves and someone inside and outside of the workplace. But really the message that I want to share with you today is that now is the time to focus on the medium to long term, to build that well-being strategy that really would have helped you across the last year and being able to add on top of that if you've already built one. So the challenge that we're facing at the moment is that over half of employees across the UK at the moment, and it's the same data within the United States as well, are experiencing stress, anxiety and depression. Around 63% are experiencing anxiety that's having an impact upon their day-to-day -day well-being. And around 30% of those people are saying it's impacting their performance and their productivity. That's 30%, almost one third of the organization are saying that mental health issues are impacting their productivity at work. So imagine if we can just get five, 10, 15% more productive by reducing those symptoms of anxiety and depression. Now to share also 
Headaches, eye strain, migraines have risen by twofold to 75% across our organizations. And lower back pain has also increased by twofold across the last year as we've worked in workstations that we may not have before, aka the sofa, for example. And so today, what I'm going to share with you is what a well-being strategy is, but first of all, what a well-being strategy isn't. So it's not an employee assistance program or a counselling helpline. That really is just a benefit within your strategy as a whole. It's not healthcare insurance. Again, that's a benefit within the strategy. It can't be based on gut feel. If we're basing things on gut feel, we're likely to make ill-informed decisions. We need to base it on data. And that's a really key thing that I'll share with you shortly. It also can't be a tick box exercise. When people ask my number one tip, for a senior leader to implement an effective well-being strategy, the number one thing that I'll turn away and say is that it's authentic. That's so important that if we're just doing things as a tick box, employees will see through it and it will actually backfire. If we're saying, look, here's a platform for you, but there's still bullying in the workplace that we've not eradicated and taken a zero tolerance stance to, then employees just will not engage with it and it will backfire with him. And the final thing, little bit tongue in cheek, is it's not a fruit bowl as well. It's much more than that. An employee wellbeing strategy needs to permeate the whole of the organization. It needs to be in the cultural fabric within our organizations from top down and senior leaders buying into it through to bottom up and side to side. So all of this I will share with you over the next 15 to 20 minutes. Now, one of the major areas with wellbeing at the moment is engagement. And around 3% of employees engage with traditional well-being programs. And that's a huge issue. If we return back to the statistics that I just took you through, around 50, 60% um, of employees are experiencing regular stress, anxiety, or depressive symptoms. And so if we're only getting 3% engaged with our programs, that is a massive and major issue. And something that we're very proud of at Champion Health is to boast an average engagement rate of 60% with our members. And we'll share with you how we get to that stage. So the first thing is how do you get employees on board initially? So we've broken down something called the EAST model. And this is four components that the likes of Instagram, Uber, Facebook, all of these organizations, Amazon, Apple, they use the EAST model to build out their technology. And they, you could argue on one hand, they may not be socially ethical organizations, but on the other hand, they are hugely engaging. So let's learn from what they are doing. So we need to make things easy for people to access. Now, if someone's experiencing anxiety or depression, for example, they're not going to trawl through hundreds of emails to see what the company offers. It needs to all be in one place. It needs to be one click away. And the service itself needs to be really easy to access. You can't have a helpline that actually you've got to go through step by step by step by step. You need something that employees can engage with straight away. Again, returning back to the apps on our phone or the likes of Amazon, it is the easiest platform. And that's what we draw to as human beings. And that's really basic human psychology within. But a lot of well-being we get wrong when it comes to making things slightly confusing, complicated, having things dotted around in different places. So the first thing is making it easy. The second is making it attractive. And again, comes back to basic human psychology. When we find it appealing and rewarding, but also visually attractive, we're much more likely to then engage with it. And so if it's on an intranet site that is quite clunky, hard to use, again, people will click on the X button at the top right corner of their screen. We need to make these initiatives attractive to people to engage with. The third element is making it social and really drawing in social connection. And that's something that's been a major issue across, across the last year and a half, that we've really become slightly more isolated throughout society with lockdowns and with COVID and with working from home. We need to really bring in those social elements to bring people together. And that's the way that you'll get the engaged population then encouraging the disengaged population to then engage. They're the population that we really need to get engaged with our initiatives. And the final element is then timely. We need it to be fast and flexible for individuals to be able to engage with. If we're looking to train them up in two days, often people will disengage with that. They'll say they've got too much work. We need timely interventions. So at Champion Health, we have training courses and we have over 200 of them that are two to three minutes long. And we found engagement has skyrocketed within there. And lo and behold, you can often get across the key points within two to three minutes when you'd normally deliver a one hour session. I'm actually finding that at the moment a challenge 
uh, because this is normally a day training session that I do within this presentation, uh, but I'm condensing it into 25 minutes. So what we'd always encourage organizations to do is to start with the data and end with the data. Make sure whether it's through an employee survey that it's been developed by a well-being professional. That's so important because the questions that you ask are really crucial because they can sometimes be triggering for an individual. So at Champion, we provide a, an online health assessment to every individual across the organization. They get their personalized well-being report that you can see here. But then as an organization, you can get anonymized and aggregated well-being analytics to make data-driven decisions to support your team. So is it the stress within the organization that's a major area? And within the stress, is it job security that's a major area if it's work-related? Or actually, is it home-related stress and the likes of divorce, for instance? And so you really need the data to be able to then make the informed decisions to support your team. Now, that leads nicely onto the next slide. And when we're looking at the data, we need to look at two things when it comes to well-being. We need to look at what employees want and also what employees need. Now, these two things often differ. So with Champion Health, employees often want to increase their activity levels, but what they really need is to improve their mental well-being, for example. And so looking at the wants and the needs, do they marry up? Then you can plan out initiatives and interventions on the specific areas. So let's say that physical inactivity is a major area within your workforce, then you could look to do a step challenge, or actually you could implement a policy whereby for lunch, everyone has to get active for at least 20 minutes, for example. And so again, without that data beforehand, we then need to look at the wants and needs. We then need to look at the interventions following it. It goes in that chronological order. It doesn't start with the intervention. Um, we need the data to underpin it. And something that we'd strongly recommend is starting with all areas of well-being. Now, these are all of the areas of well-being that we would strongly encourage you to focus on. But really, it is so hard to focus on 20 different areas of well-being when we haven't got the budget to cover 20 different providers. So this is something that Champion Health have done with our one platform, all areas of well-being concept, whereby we have brought everything and all of these areas together. But if you're not looking for an external provider at the moment, we strongly suggest you conduct a, uh, a risk assessment, for example, or an employee survey that looks at all of these areas and it looks at what do you want to change and what do you need to change. And what you can then do is start to plan out initiatives for your organization, whether it's on financial well-being or whether it's on exercise, sleep, resilient stress. These are all of the areas and we suggest starting with all of the areas and then narrowing down, following the data um, to specific interventions where the data suggests. So the other element that I really want to touch upon today is proactive and reactive. So again, I'm really whittling through this, but if you just get your pen and paper out, um, you're able to, to make notes, you're able hopefully to take one thing away. But there's the funnel approach when it comes to well-being. And what we often get where my mouse is, is people focusing on the bottom end of the funnel. But the bottom end of the funnel impacts the least amount of employees, the top end impacts the most amount of employees within here. And really when it comes to well-being, we're quite reactive at the moment. So if problems occurred, then let's get that individual who's absent for two months into expert services. Now we're fishing people out of the river when it's too late. Let's stop people getting into the river, first of all. So whilst we do need reactive services that focus on treatment and training, for example, we also need the proactive services that focus on the assessment and the strategy at the core of it. So we can focus on 100% of the workforce to support a population that's thriving inside and outside of the workplace and how can we continue for them to thrive? But then also how do we get to the population that is unwell, is unhealthy, for example, whether it's mental health issues or back pain, we then need to support them with interventions. So focus on proactive and reactive, not one or the other. That's a really important thing. So we don't alienate a population within our workforce. And really, in terms of the data behind proactive and reactive, a lot of people say, OK, I can see the return on investment when it comes to reactive services. So someone's off sick and we give them therapy. They then come back to work. OK, I can see a really clear ROI there. But this is a piece of research conducted by Deloitte, and I'm sure we're all aware of Deloitte um, within here. And it was called Refreshing the Case for Investment when it comes to employee mental health. And this was published in January 2020. And what we can see within here 
is that the return on investment for reactive services was three to one. So for every £10,000 invested, £30,000 was returned. So again, reactive interventions are like physiotherapy, mental health support, whether it's therapy um, all the way through to counselling. But when it goes to proactive mental health support, it averages a five to one return on investment. And so again, for every £10,000 invested, 50,000 is returned. So whether that's line manager workshops, health coaching, but then we focus on organizational wide culture and awareness raising that I'm going to touch upon shortly. That then doubles the ROI from reactive initiatives to six to one. So again, £10,000 invested on average, £60,000 is returned. And you may ask where this return is from. It's from improving sales and so productivity and performance in the workplace, reducing mistakes such as data breaches, for example. That is very hard to measure, though. It then looks at staff turnover, recruitment strategies all the way through to preventing absence from occurring. So all of that is covered within here and tailored web portals, personalized exercise sessions and training for leaders and line managers um, is all within there. That will return your investment the most. So moving on to the next area in terms of focusing on the whole organization. So we touched upon the organizational wide um, awareness raising initiatives. We then need to focus on the, the whole organization within our strategy. And so we've adapted a very academic model called the social ecological model to something that we phrased as the well-being onion. And so what this is, is you've got the individual side of things for your employees. So the first layer is how can we support the individual employee to thrive? How can we give them mindfulness exercises, for example, self-care strategies, exercise classes, nutrition plans, financial well-being support to really empower the boots on the ground? So that's the first layer of the onion. And you can see that's the core layer. You've then got the interpersonal, which is your social connection. And that's something that's really important when it comes to well-being. Have you got internal well-being champions that are able to support the people that are disengaged within well-being, for example? Have you got people shouting about well-being and really looking at aligning with your organization's culture and values? Because quite simply, if your organization has words on the wall about culture and what you're going to do to support employees' well-being. It won't work if you don't get that interpersonal connection within here as well. So there are a lot of initiatives that you can do to be able to support employees um, really start talking about well-being within here. You've then got the organizational wide side of things as well. And this is the area that sometimes can be ignored when it comes to organizational change. And this will take looking in the mirror as an organization. Are we doing everything to build a psychologically safe space that people look forward to turning up to work and putting in the best possible work that they can do? Are we giving every individual within our organization the skills and, and the tools to be able to thrive within their job? Are we doing everything we can do to make them feel comfortable, happy, and same with supporting people around them as well? And so the organizational level is hugely important and that's where your strategy starts but it must permeate all the way down through the interpersonal and individual. So an example of focusing on the whole organization is building a strategy and then disseminating it across the organization through your communication strategy. And again, we could do a whole session on a communication strategy within here. So that's the other element is focusing on the whole organization when it comes to well-being and making those data-driven decisions to support your team. So how does this look in practice? So this is a study done by Unilever on a on their team of around 400 employees or sorry, it's 800 employees. They invested 50 pounds per employee. Um, and so that was a, a total intervention cost of 40,000 pounds within year one. And what they did was it give them a tailored web portal. So an online portal that looked at conducting a uh, well-being assessment. That well-being assessment then gave personalized advice to the individual employees. So that really impacts the individual employee on the individual level. It then gave um, anonymized wellbeing analytics to the organization. And so the organization could go, okay, is it sleep and insomnia that's the major issue or is it mental health issues that are going to be a major issue going forwards and might increase the risk of absence? Is it back pain? Is it financial instability, for example? And so off the back of that, what the organization then did was invested in tailored seminars and workshops um, and training sessions, awareness raising, coaching, 
to be able to support the employees in the areas that they wanted, again, going back to that previous comment, and the areas that they needed. And lo and behold, there was a significant reduction in negative stress levels. It reduced absence and presenteeism, so presenteeism is when we're not performing as well within work. And there was a 900% return on investment. So as we can see here, £40,000 invested, £347,000 was returned just within year one. And so that's a huge return on investment for us as an organization. And so everything that I've run through, that's what Unilever did. It was published in an academic research paper. We're more than happy to share that with you as well. So just to summarize everything that we've been through there, and again, I often deliver this in a slightly longer session. Um, and so we've had to get everything in, in terms of our knowledge into a 25 minute session, but we need to get employees on board initially. So make it easy, make it accessible, make it social and make it timely. Those four elements are hugely important. Start with the data and wants versus the needs. What do employees want to change? What do they need to change? If we skip out the data piece, we can't measure success. We don't know what success looks like. We can't have KPIs as well within our organization to be able to really measure the key elements when it comes to well-being um, and make it a board level priority as well. The third area is start with all areas of well-being. It can seem daunting, but ask employees, what do they want to focus on within here? Is it financial well-being, social health, productivity and performance through to mental well-being? What is it that they want to focus on? Again, that's something that Champion can support you with. And then the final element is looking at the whole organisation, looking at a proactive and reactive um, initiatives that you can implement, but also focus on the individual and empowering every employee focus on the social connection and the interpersonal side of things and focus on the organizational layer as well at board level. Make sure that board are fully bought in to employee wellbeing. So now I'm going to just ask you a question before we wrap up around what do these companies have in common? So Spotify, Apple and Netflix. Usually I'll get you, a, I'd usually get a bit of interaction in terms of this, but we've only got a couple of minutes left. And so what these organizations have is they make everything inclusive, accessible, and engaging. Everything's one click away. Everything looks really attractive. It's got social elements to the platform. And that's where I was scrolling through Netflix one evening, and I was watching Netflix with my six-year-old nephew, and he had everything from Peppa Pig all the way through to Peaky Blinders, documentaries through to comedies, films through to TV shows. And I said, wow, what if well-being could do this, whereby you've got all of your mindfulness, all of your exercise classes, all of your well-being reports, mood tracking, sleep tracking, learning and development from the menopause all the way through to understanding anxiety within one platform. And that's where we came up with the concept of the Netflix of well-being. And we've launched it across global organizations from global banks all the way through to the construction industry. And really this platform brings everything together. As I mentioned, you've got wellbeing action plans for every individual within your workforce. You've got workouts, mindfulness, nutrition plans, and more within here. You've got the Academy, which has best-selling authors all the way through to Olympians, and you as an organization can gain exclusive access to that. We've also got uh, tailored programs, personalized wellbeing calendars, and you're also able to track elements. And so you're not having to pay for loads of different providers to support the well-being of the workforce. It's one provider that covers everything. Now, we also build well-being strategies for organizations and produce the live analytics so you can make the data-driven decisions at the core of your strategy. That's all included within the package. And I'm more than happy to take you through a demo of the platform. So if you'd like a demo of the platform, my email is harry.bliss at championhealth.co.uk. Or if you'd actually just like a free health and wellbeing strategy review with one of the Champion Health team, that's included exclusive to the Cardinet, uh, Cardinus Connect Summit members today. So that's harry.bliss at championhealth.co.uk. .co.uk. Connect with me on LinkedIn as well. It would be great to meet you virtually. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm sure now, Sahel, um, we'll, we'll pass you on to the, um, to, to the next session. Thank you very much um, to those people provided some questions as well. Um, we have got one question, but I'm just conscious of time. I'll be able to get back to you uh, via email as well.